Hello everyone, the Green Scorpion here, and it's time to celebrate the scariest time of the year. Well, it used to be scary anyway. Halloween is all about frights, scares, and fears, and it's a time where many gather in their basements to watch some horrifying movies and TV specials. However, video games have also had their fair share of horror-induced creations, and I'm going to celebrate this year's Halloween by presenting the top 10 greatest horror games. The thing is, I'm not into horror games at all. In fact, I've only ever played two or three. So for this list, I'm enlisting some help. Hello, everyone. This is Macy, also known as Little Talks 56. She is a good friend of mine from college and is quite the horror game aficionado. So she is going to help me with this list today. Now, for this list, we're judging these games on the story, characters, atmosphere, gameplay, and of course, how well it can scare the living crap out of the player. And as usual, only games we've played and won per franchise. Also, keep this in mind. We're talking about horror games here. Hence, there will be plenty of disturbing content and very unsettling imagery. So viewer discretion is advised. And with that, let's get started. I'll admit, we might be stretching it a bit by calling Limbo a horror game, but it sure manages to stand within the genre with the incredibly unsettling atmosphere it presents. This game has you playing as a young boy in God knows where, and the game throws you in with no knowledge of what to do or how you got there in the first place. Also, the fact that the whole game is in black and white makes for an incredibly eerie setting, and the ambiguity of what's going on makes it even more unnerving. The idea of the game is to find your sister, and the way you do that is by going around and interacting with the environment in a puzzle-solving manner to move forward. While this game may seem simple, the game's art style makes it a mystery whether some objects are helpful or are going to kill you, and every living thing either wants you dead or it runs away from you, making it a very lonely experience. Speaking of death, the death scenes when you lose the game are surprisingly morbid and depressing, adding to this game's horrific atmosphere. However, with everything that works to Limbo's advantage, it does have a few problems. First, the game is very short and it can be beaten in a day. And secondly, as Oscar mentioned earlier, it's a stretch calling it a horror game, when it's more of a puzzle-solving platformer. Despite this though, Limbo sets the stage for a truly haunting and memorable experience, giving it merit within the genre. I'm not really sure how to describe this game. SCP Containment Breach is still in its beta, and it doesn't have much of a story. You play as an unnamed character trapped within a life form research facility, which belongs to the SCP Foundation. And the game only has one goal for you, escape with your life. This game's atmosphere is really disconcerting. Also, the features that are presented in this game are incredibly unique. The main enemy is SCP-173, and it can't move if someone is in its direct line of sight. The game has a blink meter that determines how long the main character has before he has to blink. But you just need to blink at the wrong time before SCP-173 begins his feast. This makes for some adrenaline-based fear. You never really know when the enemy is going to pop up and it's never clear where it is you need to go. While this game is freaky though, it isn't higher on the list mainly because it's an unfinished game. Since it's still in its beta, the game can't be beaten until the two exits are placed in for its official release. Also, to be frank, SCP-173 isn't really all that scary looking once you've seen it plenty of- uh, Oscar, are you okay? Yeah. I, I think I blinked. I I'm okay though, let's continue. The Slenderman has certainly made its mark on the internet, with tons of myths, fan art, and even its own game. Slender the Eight Pages places you in a haunted forest, typical, and your goal is to gather the eight pages spread throughout the forest, all while avoiding the Slenderman. You're only given a flashlight with a limited battery, and your character can't really do much other than jog and pick up items. This adds to the game's unsettling atmosphere, and it really makes you feel helpless as you try to escape the Slenderman, making for some thrilling scares. The presentation of the forest, the disturbing drawings on the pages, the slow monotonous music that plays in the background, as well as the panic sounds of the protagonist as she desperately tries to run, it's awesome. However, this game isn't any higher for a reason. If you last long enough to collect all the pages, it's extremely short. 
in addition, this game's difficulty is ridiculous the first time around. But on the flip side, the Slenderman's pattern of assault is incredibly easy to figure out after a while, making this game a breeze. In addition, the game's ending is enough to make you flip a freaking table. Dead Space is awesome, the weapons are awesome, the gameplay is awesome, the necromorphs are awesome, and the story is- it's awesome! Okay, seriously, Macy, get a thesaurus! Hey, I'm not lying, am I? Anyway, in Dead Space 2, you reprise the role as Isaac Clarke, three years after the events of the first game, and another necromorph outbreak has been unleashed on the city station drifting from Saturn, the Titan. There are a lot of good ideas implemented in this game. The Necromorphs' enemies was an excellent concept, and the atmosphere that the Titan Station provides is, for the lack of a better term, freaky as all hell. Also, the scenes that haunt Isaac involving his dead girlfriend make for some well-executed psychological horror. However, with as much as there is that I love about this game, it has a lot of issues. The scenery makes for plenty of opportunities for jump scares, but after encounter after encounter with these jump scares, it gets very old very quickly. Not to mention how easy it is to stomp through the bodies of the necromorphs. Either they have glass bones, or Isaac has been taking some fighting lessons from Chun-Li. Also, while I can appreciate the fact that they gave the protagonist a voice, it kind of takes away from the immersion of the game. Sure, it gives the game more to work with in terms of the story and characterization, but this is a horror game, and horror games are about... <laughs> I actually shudder to consider the games in the Resident Evil series as horror games, mainly because I think that zombie games are its own separate genre. However, there is one exception I will make for this list. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 really set the bar in terms of the series. But before we get there, let me get something out of the way here. The quick time events in this game were seriously unforgiving, and then... Leon! 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 Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Okay, Oscar. Are you done? <sighs> yeah, I'm done. Good. Now, as I was saying, Resident Evil 4 was great. The enemy designs in the game are truly terrifying, and the boss fights are well-balanced and well-executed. Also, the reload time and the scarcity of ammunition in this game give the player a god's load of anxiety, especially when dealing with the plague Spanish villagers. The level design and presentation provides a gloomy atmosphere, and it foreshadows things to come, and this game gets points for the well-written Leon Kennedy and for having typewriters as save points. Also, considering that this game revolves around saving that broken record of a president's daughter, this game is one huge escort mission. While that can be considered a bad thing, this may actually be considered the best escort mission in gaming. It's a realistic situation where you have to be wary about where you fire and, the most crucial point here, Ashley runs from danger. Overall, this game did a lot of things right. It isn't perfect, but it's enough to take the number 6 spot. When it comes to horror games, survival and escape is often the goal of the game, and Penumbra Black Plague puts a whole new twist on it. Penumbra Black Plague is the second game in the series and takes place after the events of the first game. You control the character known as Philip, and your goal is to escape the facility of the Archaic Elevated Caste, a secret organization bent on researching ancient knowledge. However, the facility is overrun with mutated creatures called the Infected, and, as it turns out, Philip is slowly becoming one. Your goal is to cure Philip and get him out alive. Needless to say, this game is freaky right off the bat. The Infected are just downright nasty, and listening to their altered speech pattern is even more unsettling. This is one horror game where the enemies actually have a level of intelligence, and contrary to the laughable undead speech in most other horror games, it adds a significant amount of psychological horror. Also, I think this game took a page out of Legend of Zelda and Metal Gear Solid. Rather than taking the enemies head on like in Resident Evil, this game focuses on stealth and puzzle solving. For those who have played stealth games, hiding from the enemy is already nerve-wracking. Having to play stealthy while solving puzzles in the middle of an enemy-infested area is enough to have you petrified and really adds a unique challenge. 
In addition, this game did an amazing job with the presentation. With a ramshackle facility and corpses more abundant than in a morgue, it provides a very disconcerting atmosphere. Also, Philip's infection causes him to hallucinate at points, and it may even cause the player to lose control of Philip. And to top it all off, the lack of music and the unsettling speech patterns of the infected is enough to put players in the brink of insanity. The only two complaints I have about this game are the protagonist and the lack of the combat system. There is no way for you to defend against the infected. While it makes sense, it still would be nice to provide some way to fight back. Also, Philip is as one-dimensional as they come. Despite this, Penumbra Black Plague will certainly provide an unforgettable experience. Eternal Darkness is next, isn't it? Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem is a Lovecraftian-inspired game with a story that we can't even begin to delve into. We'd be here all day if we had to describe this game's story, but with 12 different character arcs at 12 different times with no determinable order, it's really amazing. However, its unnecessary complexity is what's keeping it from being any higher. The gameplay for this game is tricky. The player uses alignment and magic for combat along with other basic combat techniques. The learning curve is a bit steep, but that's what ultimately adds to the game's mood. It's different, but it certainly works. Another positive note about this game is a sanity meter. As a sanity meter drops, the game becomes that much freakier. The characters start to hear cries and screams, witness monsters that aren't there, the walls start to bleed, they wake up on the ceiling, and it all just completely messes with the player's head. Then there's a lowering of the TV's volume and the blue screen of death that flips the player's insanity table. Also, the characterization is surprisingly good in this game, especially Alexandra. The story and dialogue in this game are very well written, and the characters are very well acted. The only downside is the convoluted story and the fact that this game really hasn't aged too well. Despite this, Eternal Darkness stands as a true test of sanity. In Fatal Frame 2, you play as Mio Akamura and her older twin sister Mayu. This game takes you to the woods where the twins used to play as children, but it's been cleared out to build a dam. While exploring the woods, Mayu is summoned into a fog-shrouded village by the Crimson Butterflies. While the village seems deserted at first, the sisters soon discover that vengeful spirits of the dead inhabit this village. Needless to say, it's one hell of an occasion. Fatal Frame 2 is probably one of the most creative horror games I've ever seen. As it turns out, the spirits that haunt the village are trapped in a perpetual hell for failing to complete a dark ritual within the town. These spirits are incredibly well designed and make for some freaky enemies. Also, the abandoned Japanese village is presented beautifully, providing an eerie atmosphere from beginning to end. The combat system is also to be complemented. The idea behind weakening and banishing the spirits by using a camera is unique and provides quite a challenge. The better your shot, the more damage you do, but the scarcity of good quality film within the game only adds to the challenge. Also, there is something to be said about the protagonists of this game. I won't mention any real details, but their relationship throughout the game suggests that something else is going on, and as it unfolds, it only raises more questions and it becomes really blood-curdling. Nice use of a... thesaurus, Oscar. Okay, okay, sorry. Either way, Fatal Frame 2 has a story and gameplay that is sure to boggle your mind. <laughs> Oscar! Oscar, snap out of it! Ah, I'm fine. Really. Okay. So, as you've probably guessed, number two is Amnesia the Dark Descent. For the modern day gaming community, this is one of the best horror games to date. One of the main reasons is because this game does something that not many other horror games can pull off. Subtlety. Unlike the likes of Dead Space or Resident Evil, Amnesia the Dark Descent takes a different direction by making the enemies scarce. By doing this, you never get used to seeing a monster over and over again because you are trying to avoid it at all costs. As a result, the monsters in this game are that much scarier. Combining this with smooth gameplay, a daunting and frightening maze-like atmosphere and design, and good use of the sanity meter mechanic makes this game freaky and fun. Also, compliments to the game's water level. Ugh. 
Also, there's something to be said about the story and the characterization. You start off as Daniel, who at first you feel pretty sorry for. Then, less than halfway through the game, you realize that Daniel is not the man you first thought him to be, forcing you to make the decision about whether what you're doing is right or wrong. As more details unfold, it becomes an enigma to the mind. Unfortunately, good story, characterization, gameplay, and presentation don't mean perfection. The story behind Daniel and Alexander, the man he killed, starts to become disappointing to say the least and the decisions you make throughout the game don't really affect the outcome. The ultimate result is decided at the very end of the game with a less than satisfying final boss and really disappointing ending. Otherwise, this game is near perfect and only one horror game stands above. The final horror is upon us, but before we get there, let's recap. Number 10, Limbo. Number 9, SCP Containment Breach. Number 8, Slender the Eight Pages. Number 7, Dead Space 2. Number 6, Resident Evil 4. Number 5, Penumbra Black Plague. Uh, number 4, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. Number 3, Fatal Frame 2, The Crimson Butterfly. And number 2, Amnesia the Dark Descent. Our number one is Silent Hill 2. When it comes to horror games, Silent Hill 2 has it all. The atmosphere, the music, the monsters, and one hell of a story. Also, this game doesn't follow the events of the first game, so it's not a direct sequel, but it is in the same universe. The story follows James Sunderland, a store clerk who receives a letter from his wife to come find him at their special place, Silent Hill. This is immediately a puzzler since James' wife died three years prior to the game's events. James travels to Silent Hill and the atmosphere is presented in a really spooky manner. In all the other Silent Hill games, the main protagonist has at least some sort of assist character. James, on the other hand, has no one and everyone in the game either wants him dead or wants nothing to do with him, incorporating a sense of loneliness. Another thing to point out is the gameplay. Sure, this game doesn't necessarily have a smooth combat system like Dead Space, but it's not a combat-centered game. The game is centered on puzzle solving, and half of the time the puzzles don't even make sense. There's a lot of symbolism involved in this game, from the characters to the puzzles, and even the monsters have a say in what's going on. Unlike the aforementioned games, the player has to consider everything that's going on around them, and it makes for a mind-boggling experience. Silent Hill 2 also has one of the best stories in the horror genre, mainly because it relates to everyday people. It's a simple story that has much to say with the little details, and once they come together, it becomes a horrifying tale that's surprisingly realistic. James Sunderland travels to Silent Hill to find his dead wife, and as the game progresses, it's hinted that James's wife didn't die from her illness. Without giving anything away, James continues his investigation and finds a truth that he does not want to hear, and his emotions become the manifestation of his wife's death, the mystery behind Silent Hill, and the infamous Pyramid Head a wretched monster that symbolizes James Sunderland's horrific past. Silent Hill 2 does everything right in terms of a horror game. The atmosphere is unsettling and fascinating, the gameplay is fitting, the characters are well developed, and the story is a well-written masterpiece that will blow your mind. And most importantly, it's just disturbing, and it's an experience that will stick with the player for a long time, whether they want it to or not. And that is enough for us to call Silent Hill 2 the number one greatest horror game in history. I am the Green Scorpion. And I'm Little Tox 56. And see you. Uh, Oscar? <laughs> Oscar? <laughs> Oscar! <laughs> Oscar! <laughs>